All right, y'all. This is one of my most requested topics for a video. A lot of you want a step-by-step -step guide to disassembling a yellow boy rifle for cleaning. Well, the disassembly part is the easy part. It's getting it all back together that can be the challenge. Well, we're gonna go over all of that today. And I thank you for your patience in waiting for this episode to finally happen. Now that it's here, do me a small favor, smash that like button. It'll help promote this video to other folks, which you can also do yourself by sharing a link to this video to anyone you think might need to see it. I appreciate that. Now, while I have my 1866 apart, I'm gonna install some new parts in it, a new stainless magazine follower and spring from Pioneer Gunworks, a new main spring, just like the one we put in from Long Hunter in the last rifle we did. And then a new firing pin and firing pin spring from Shotgun Boogie. And I'll have links to all of those parts down in the description box of this episode. I think we should have all of the tools we need for disassembly, a basic screwdriver, hammer, punch. Don't worry if you don't have a punch, I'll show you a workaround for that. As far as cleaning, I think we have everything we need here. Ballistol for the initial cleaning. And then after it's soaked in my ultrasonic cleaner, we'll uh, polish all of the brass with some brass polish. And then for any parts that need any internal lubrication, I like to use this Hornady One Shot product. So, that should just about cover everything. Time to get to work. I'll speed some of these segments up just to prevent this video from being over an hour long. And I'll slow some other things down to a regular speed when I want to explain any details on the disassembly, cleaning, or reassembly. Once the threads are released on this one from the back plate, you should just be able to slide it right out. Of course, you want to be careful. You don't want to scratch up your yellow boy at all. Now it might need some help. There we go. All right. This one has some aftermarket springs in it. I don't necessarily love these as much as I do the regular springs, but they seem to be doing the job. They just might look a little different than what you're used to seeing. Okay. Get our bolt out of the way here. This one might be a little different from what you're used to with a pin like that in it. So you may have a pin that looks like that to remove your bolt. I don't have a punch the right size. So like I said, you can just use a little, little nail to tappy tap that out. just like so, and then your bolt. 
bolt will come right out. Which is a little different design than what yours might look like. Let's get the hammer off. We're also gonna wanna take out that main spring, so we might as well get this off too. We're actually gonna need the main spring out to get the hammer off. So you remember this from the last episode. Right, you remove the two screws and then a tug. Oh, wiggle and a tug and it's free. There's that main spring. Now our bolt comes out. All free to go. This will all get cleaned out inside of here, inside of here, all back here. We'll clean all of that with the Brasso. All these small parts will go in the ultrasonic cleaner. And I'll throw the backing plates in there too. But all of these little screws and such, I don't want to risk them getting lost, so I'll set those to the side. And this we'll take and put in the ultrasonic cleaner and come back and polish the yellow board. Okay, I like to use a little bit of simple green to sort of degrease the parts. So we'll put a little bit of that in there. Along with a little water. And then we'll drop it in our ultrasonic cleaner. And this should just be hand tight unless you're dealing with like a factory one or sometimes they, they get a little stiff. But Slicks makes a tool for that. I don't know why that one wants to be so sticky. Probably just because it's on camera and it's camera shy. That's unusual. Very unusual. We've got it loose enough we can use a screwdriver on it, but like I said, it's uh, normally it should just roll in with the fingers. So I don't know if the end of this got, got pinched and that's what's causing it to hang up. Yeah, because it goes in awfully, awfully tight. <laughs> well, we'll leave that up and take a look at it. There's our old follower. So all of this can go by the wayside. We'll just bag it up and replace it with our new spring once it's cleaned. For black powder cleaning, I use about a 50-50 mix of Blistol and water. We can also take the trigger out, not really necessary, but I'll just show you the whole thing completely disassembled. First, the trigger spring screw. And then that's where we can use our punch. Looks like we could have taken that out anyways. It needs some cleaning up in there. 
If you enjoy content like this episode of Jedi TV, please consider supporting the channel in one of the following ways. Buy me a coffee. Like this episode. Share this episode. Subscribe to my second YouTube channel. Support my work by becoming my very first Patreon. Links to all of those options can be found in the description box of this episode. Okay, so now we can polish up all of the frame and the internals, get it all ready for reassembly. I've mentioned before that I prefer Wright's brass polish for this work, but if you're a fan of Brasso, it works just as well. Personally though, I don't care for the strong odor from the Brasso. Okay, you get the idea, right? You combine the polishing compound with some elbow grease and you make the yellow boy shiny and like new. You don't have to watch this whole process. Let's skip ahead. Okay, we've got the frame all cleaned and polished and we don't have to worry about that polishing the outside as much right now because that'll get a fine polishing once we're all reassembled. Also, the parts are out of the Sonic Cleaner, and I've sprayed them with our one shot. I've also done the same thing with the small screws and bits that I didn't put in the Sonic Cleaner. They were all sprayed and then wiped down really well with the one shot. So it looks like everything's ready for assembly. Reassembly. <laughs> this is the fun part. So we've got our new extended firing pin from Shotgun Boogie. We'll just drop that inside of our clean bolt there. Looks good. This goes inside like so. Because remember, once we get it all installed, this will this will lock that like so once it's in the gun. There it is. So that'll go right up in there once the firing pin is in. And this slides in. And like so. There it is. Bingo. Let's do our trigger next. Actually, Let's do the hammer and the spring, because that's always a challenge. You all remember how that worked last time, right? Okay, it's just one of those things that just insists on being done off camera. Where you have to hold it upside down and get it in just the right spot. Yes, there it is. Well, there you can see how it works. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> 
that actually might have been the better way to put it together too before we tighten that down <laughs> Let's put the screw in. That's gonna make a huge difference. Okay. Trigger time. Now there's a little slot that this trigger spring goes in, in the trigger, bam. And then this fun little screw. Oops. That'll stay in once we get our pin in place. But in the meantime, it just wants to be a pain. Okay. Our carrier can go in now. This will get inserted into this hole in the carrier. There we go. Just like so. Back plate. That's the pin that'll hold that into place now. Another one for the other side. Now the back plate should hold everything together while we manipulate everything else in here. Oh, well, we better scratch that. Now let's try to get our lever in. Okay. Now. How about this spring? And another little tiny screw. We don't want to snug this up right now because once we get the lever screw in place, we'll have to, you know, we need a little bit of slack there to work that, but I'm just trying to get everything to that point. I'm just going to let that hold everything.
Okay, now, we'll still be able to fine tune everything with that in place. And the 66 is a, is a little easier to work on because you don't have this plate in your way when you're doing all this. Now everything's done and tighten up this lever spring so we don't have all that slop in there. There we go. Now before we tighten everything back up, we'll just hit it with the one shot. Nice bit of lubricant in there for those to run on. Seems to be running fine. Slide this back. Put our magazine spring in. And again, I'm just gonna hit this with some one shot too, just a little bit to keep it nice and lubricated in there. Prevent any rust. Stainless steel follower. Now this one, I, like I said, I really don't know what the deal is, why it's being difficult. It's just very tight to screw in. So be patient if you're using one of these brass ones. Use a larger screwdriver if you have one. Just patient. There we go. Okay. Now we know we have to tighten that hammer spring because last time <laughs> we didn't and we ended up with the light strikes, right? That should do it, especially with that extended firing pin.
Beautiful. Let's uh, grab our aim cams and see if this will shoot. All right, if you've watched this video all the way through to this point, you definitely deserve at least one more stage. And the rest of the stages that I filmed from this day of shooting will end up posted over on Instagram. I encourage you to follow me on that platform. You'll find links for all of that in the description box of this episode. I'm Jed, this is Jedi TV, and I'll see you in some other place in some other time. Oh, that was gunfighter friendly. Twenty nine ninety seven, two nine nine seven. I can work Long with that. Long guns, the unloading table. Right. Thank you. Pick and set.